Hello and welcome to the world of Warcraft. My name is Novarian and we're here at the Royal College of Magicians where we've been undertaking a systematic review of the literature on the neurobiology of addiction. In DSM-4 and ICD-10, substance abuse has its own diagnostic category, whereas behavioural addictions such as pathological gambling are listed under impulse control disorders. However, there is a large evidence base that both substance and behavioural addictions share the same underlying neurobiological mechanism. There are thought to be three main systems which become dysregulated by the addiction. The motivation reward system, the impulse control system, and the affect regulation system. Dopamine appears to be the key player in the motivation reward system, and the critical pathway is thought to involve the mesolimbic system, running from the ventral tegmental area to the nucleus accumbens. Studies have shown increases in intrasynaptic dopamine levels in this pathway as a result of priming with psychoactive drugs, and this increase is mirrored in process addictions such as pathological gambling. Serotonin is the main neurotransmitter thought to be responsible for impulse control, and low levels of serotonin markers and metabolites have been noted in substance and process addicts. There is also thought to be an aspect of impaired frontal lobe inhibition. Serotonin also indirectly affects the motivation reward system by modulating the firing rate of the dopaminergic VTA, as well as influencing dopamine release in the NA. Affect regulation is the homeostatic system by which emotions are kept within certain ranges in order to facilitate normal function. Corticotrophin releasing factor plays a critical role and has two main axes, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal system and the extra hypothalamic circuit. Stimuli that activate the CRF circuits have been found to potentiate mesolimbic dopaminergic reward pathways and both psychoactive substances and processes can cause impairment of this system. Thus, the evidence seems to lean towards a final common pathway for substance and process addictions. But how does this apply to video game addiction? Although there are few video game specific neurobiological studies, fMRI imaging studies on video game players has demonstrated increased activity in the reward systems, critically the nucleus accumbens which was the terminus for the dopamine based motivation reward system. Radio-labeled dopamine has been used to detect changes in dopaminergic transmission whilst playing video games and mimics patterns seen in psychoactive substance abusers. A number of studies have demonstrated the value of video games to the medical community. One study of over 300 surgeons found that the single highest factor correlated with high performance was video game playing. However, these data were only applicable to laparoscopic procedures. Physically demanding games, such as Dance Dance Revolution, have been trialled as therapy for both obesity and psychiatric conditions such as ADHD and anxiety disorders, with promising results. A study published in the Lancet Infectious Diseases used the inclusion of fantasy diseases in a virtual world to model real-world epidemiology, with over 10 million human players making independent decisions concerning their behaviour towards the disease. In conclusion, there is a putative neurobiological mechanism for video game addiction, and early studies suggest that the final common pathway of addiction may indeed be responsible, although much work remains to be done. Based on this unity of underlying pathology, there may be a case for grouping substance and process addictions into one category in upcoming revisions of DSM-4 and ICD-10.